want to welcome everybody to Tech Talks today. We're so grateful to have so many of you from our EMSC State Partnership joining us today. Um, Jane Lowe is going to be presenting data visualization, uh, charts, graphs, and filters. Um, these are things that we see and use every day, and we're excited to learn more from her about that. As a reminder, our monthly challenge was to identify what stands out most to you about charts and graphs in your everyday work. Um, these things are meant to help us um, engage with the data process and to help encourage quality improvement. And so we're excited to learn more from Jane. Um, go ahead and take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. I uh, also have my cat on my lap, so I apologize in advance if she just decided to start screaming like she always do. Um, but other than that, you have me with you today. Let's see. Trying to share the right screen. Just this one, I believe. Are you guys seeing the presenter view or is it just the... Well, we can see you full screen. Oh, my full screen? Mm-hmm. Oh, full just screen. the okay. It looks good, yeah. Okay, awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome everyone to today's Tech Talk. We're gonna cover some tips or skills that I usually do when I make graphs, charts, or even filters, if we have time to cover those. Um, mainly this tech talk, I want the focus to, I hope the focus will be on, you know, how you can use some of the skills um, and how to make effective graph. You can use all of the skills on any presentation, you know, posters or any reports that you have, and we encourage you to utilize these skills. So the agenda for today, uh, we're gonna cover two main things. The first thing is we're going to cover two core design principles when we are making uh, data visualization. Um, they, that will provide you with some baseline to follow, and hopefully you uh, it will help you to make your graphs more effective. After that, the second part of the tech talk today, I'm going to demonstrate uh, some before and after for mainly a bar chart, how we can make it you know, just more effective in general. Before we start, I just want to clarify, uh, point out that some of the materials we're going to use today, um, all the data that I'll be using are from the census.gov. So, you know, they're all public and things like that. These are the two data set that I'll be using, mainly the ACS one year estimate subject tables. Um, so if you do notice anything that is not familiar from the graph or the data that we'll be showing, um, just please keep in mind that all of the numbers are estimates. And I did have to remove the margin of error um, to make the graph a little less busy. So if we don't have any questions, we're going to jump right in. The first, um, let's see, so the, uh, the first design principles, the first one is simplicity. Simplicity is definitely the key. Um, we will want to reduce cluttered as much as possible, because if there's too many things in one graph, it could distract people from your main message. Um, and there will be like too many messages. So it makes the graph a little less effective. And we will also demonstrate what it means by that. You know, in a perfect world, it would be great if we can have one graph that have 30 messages in it. Um, but then it is like what I said, it could be distracting um, and it kind of loses the purpose for your graph. The next one is the use of color. Um, when you use color for your graph, um, make sure it would be better to use uh, color that are contracts so you can see that they're different. For example, if you see the background here for this PowerPoint, like this shade of green, they are different shade of greens, you know, but it is still a little hard to identify which green, like which specific shapes these are because they are so similar in colors. So try to avoid colors like that. The other one for accessibility reasons, it would be great if you can also choose some colorblind friendly palettes. You can get all of them um, from Google. So next slide, I'm gonna demonstrate, show you a 
graph, a bar chart that I made in Excel, again, using the census data. So I would, would like to invite you to take a couple moments to just look at this graph and to answer these two questions, if you can. The first one is, what do you think, what is the first thing you notice? What is the main message you think this graph is trying to tell you? Or if you could share some of the problems with, the ch with this chart. You can unmute yourself or you can put uh, your comments in the chat. People in the chat are saying, it hurts my brain, too busy. Um, Caitlin said she thinks it's sum of population by state. Awesome. Very male and female. Hot mess. And then, yeah, Carol says hot mess. And, and Faye in California says it's definitely overwhelming. Okay. I love all of that. Uh, it freaks out your eyes because it looks 3D. Yep. Exactly. <clears throat> Very good observation. So let's see. So these are a couple of things that at least it first came to my mind is I don't know what the main message is, is right? Because there's so many different things coming out. If we go back to the graph, the first thing, I know you hurt your brain, stay with me, but you can see, I do notice there are different states over down here. There are the gender, the female and male that we uh, one of the comments talk about. And then there are all of these things. There are just so many things going on. Like if I look at this, I have to tilt my head and look at this. Is that under five years, five to nine years, 10 to 14 years, I don't know what this means, right? It could be two things. It could be um, the duration of time. Is it under five years of time, under five to between five to nine years, or is it under five years old, right? So those are two different, different messages that you can get. So the main message is lost. It's not a very effective graph. Too many things distracting. It definitely hurts my brain. And then there's no labels. You know, all of these different bars, like if I look at this one, these two, it's very hard to tell which one is taller or which one is bigger than the other one, because I don't know, you know, there's no labels here. I can't really track it over here. It's very hard to tell. And the third one is what Patty said. It is a 3D graph. You know, it is a little more of a personal preference, but you know, uh, Industry suggestion is that try to use 2D graph as much as possible because it does take people a little longer time to interpret anything with 3D than 2D. The last thing is the color. You can see all of them are just different shade of blue. And whatever this pattern is, it hurts my brain too. Um, it's very hard to tell which one is the darker blue and which one is the lighter blue. So now I'm gonna switch to Excel and we can fix this together. Are you guys seeing the Excel right now? Yes, it's on your screen. Awesome, thank you. Thanks, Jane. So the first one we're gonna fix, a couple of things. <laughs> the first thing, let's make it back to a normal style. And, okay, there we go. Normal style. I'm going to go a little quick when I do all the different uh, fix today. But, you know, remember this tech that is recorded and we do have a couple links for you to share. Um, so you can refer those if you want to learn how I do those changes. First thing, I'm going to change it back to a normal format. Instead of all those different style, now it's solid color. Honestly, just this, I think my brain just thanked me how easy I can read this now. So this is the first thing I'm going to fix. Some of the things uh, with the style, I'm also going to change it back to a 2D graph, which I'm going to click here and change it back to 2D. And you can see the differences with the depths and the 2D. So now that you know we changed two of the styles, let's also change the color so it's a little easier to read. And I can go back here, change colors. And we're just gonna pick the first one because the color is more contracts. 
And just like that, now that we have the blue and the orange, which is pretty easy to, you know, di differentiate, um, now that you can see a little clear with the bar, but I would say the graph is still pretty busy, right? So what we're gonna do, this is actually a pivot graph, a pivot chart. Um, so you do need to have a pivot table beforehand, but you know, for the sake of today's tech time, I'm just gonna do the changes here. So actually, I only wanted to focus on the population who are um, under 15 years old, for example. So what I'm going to do, I'm only going to keep the variables that I need. So I'm going to go over here if H and only select these three groups, which is under five years, five to nine years, 10 to 14 years, which is what I wanted to focus on wherever the population is under 15 years old. I'm gonna click okay. And then boom, there you go. Now I think it's a lot easier to read. You can even kind of see a trend going up as well that you can see it's like, you know, uh, when it looks like when the population is older, it looks like there's more um, amount of people over there. I'm gonna do a little bit of formatting so it's a little easier to read at the bottom as well. I'm gonna add, let's see, format access, the tick marks. I'm gonna add the major type outside, inside, and then the minor type outside. So this is the difference it make. Now that you can see that there are three, four different states we have Connecticut, Iowa, Oklahoma, Utah. I'm going to actually bold these axes. So it's a little easier to read. But you can see that they are kind of categorized over here, different groups for the years, the state, and things like that. Now that we kind of see the trend, let's add a title. This is what I was thinking about is um, state by state gender breakdown, understanding the youth population age zero to 14, which is what I'm going to do over here. The plus sign, chart title, I'm going to just add it here. I'm going to make it a little bigger yeah, if it lets me. There we go. Title is pretty important because then, you know, it's usually even the first few things that people look at. Um, try to make your title as inclusive as possible, meaning like you have all of the things that you're going to talk about in this graph, because then it gives your audience a direction of what they're looking at. Um, you can see the differences I make here is I put a state by state gender breakdown. So I know it's about different state comparison. It looks like gender is also involved in the comparison. And it also helps you know what uh, the group you're looking at is understanding the youth population age zero to 14, which is what we have here under five years, five to nine years, 10 to 14 years, different states. So those are the things that um, we can make it so it's a little more clear and easier to understand. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some data labels. Because we talk about, it's very hard, like for me right now, it's very hard to see what is the one on the left and the differences on the right. Like what is the gap here, right? It's very hard to tell. So I'm going to add the data labels. Add here, data labels. And then you can see you're like, oh, okay, now I see the data labels, but it is arguably more busy because the numbers are really big. And it's pretty hard to see, they're pretty small. So what I'm gonna do is the data format that Braden will uh, paste the link in the chat is that there is a custom way that you can make it. So it will be a shorter format. I'm gonna change it to instead of the full number, it will be showing like 11, sorry, 100K or 200K, 113K. So you don't need to see the full number, but you get an idea of how uh, big the population is. So what I'm going to do is go to the data labels, go to more options, and then go to number, and then change it back to numbers, zero decimal points. 
this is a format code that you can do if I do it right. <laughs> Zero comma K. Apply. And then you can see that the label, instead of showing the full number, it's probably a little small, instead of the full number that you see on the orange bars, uh, it will be a smaller one. Now it's only 131K instead of the full uh, number that you see. So it's a little clear. I'm going to do the same thing for the orange one as well. I'm going to click on that. It should automatically select all of the data labels on the orange bar. The same thing. Go to the number category, zero decimal point. And then the format code that you use is zero comma K. Add. And then it gets a lot shorter. Now this is the differences that you can see. Oh, it's a lot shorter. You can kind of see, you know, the numbers are not overlapping anymore. It's a little easier to read. So now that we have the data labels, right, we can kind of tell the differences between here and the differences between here is different. We have the number labels. We actually don't need the access lines anymore and the access label because the access label is to help people to find out. Quick question, Jane. Yes. Um, Mark is asking if it rounds automatically and correctly for you when you use like the K option. That is a great question. I don't think it rounds because what it does, it should just whatever the original number is. And then I think they just cut off the last three digit and change it to K. So I don't think it rounds. Yeah, we'd have to check and see if it, mm -hmm. if it rounds those three digits when it gets rid of them or not. Right, yeah, that's a great question. Okay, thanks Jane. Yeah, of course. So now that we actually don't need these access line, I'm gonna delete them. Because when you read, you know, right, you try to find what is the digit using the line. Now that we don't need it because we have the label, we can take those off. So I'm going to delete this. You can see the background get a lot more clear. I'm going to also delete this part. And this is the graph we're seeing right now. So a quick reminder, this is the original. Oh, not this one, but you know, something similar with this one. And now we're making it a lot easier to understand. So this is the one for bar chart. So it looks like we do have some time. I also want to demonstrate quickly um, what different uh, types of graph is it going to change. So this is the bar chart. It is more it is better to you know, see a comparison between different um, groups of elements. If it is a pie chart, it's usually better um, to use it for single purposes. And I'm going to demonstrate here. So if we click on the pie chart, I'm going to make it a little bigger. This is the pie chart. Is using the exact same data that we were using for the bar chart. But you can see this doesn't tell you anything because this is like everything is the same. I don't see any messages. Nothing is significant. So what I would suggest if, you know, under what circumstances will you use a pie chart? I will use it if it is only for like one group of things. And then you see how that group breaks down. So what I would do a simple change is maybe I would just compare one state instead of all the state. And I'm going to choose Utah because that's my state. And then you can see here that now that it, you know, it shows you only the free group, the under five years, five to nine years, 10 to 14 years. So you can kind of see the breakdown, but it's still a little hard to figure out which, uh, pi which part is bigger than the other one. What we could do is we could add the data labels. I know it's a little harder to see, but instead of putting it just the number, you could even change it to a percentage. So you go to the custom, made the data labels, choose percentage, and then I will take the value out. And then I will put it inside, uh, outside end. I know they're still a little small. Let's see. But then at least this way, instead of using the value, using percentage helps you understand it a little better, right? Because if you have the value, 
which I mean, yeah, I know this one is the blue session is smaller than the gray session, but I don't know what percentage, right? which one exactly, how much more. So in this case, using a percentage would be a little better than using the value. Hey, Jane, you've got just about 10 minutes. Yay, thank you. So these are the different uh, types of chart that you can do and all of the changes you could do in Excel as well. So we're going to jump back to the PowerPoint. Oh, just this one. Let's see. So I just want to show you again what the difference is the before and after. The before is the one on the left hand side is very hard to read. It's kind of you know, very distracting and it does hurt my brain. It hurt, definitely hurts my brain. I pre uh, prepare for this presentation. The graph number two on the right hand side is a lot easier. You can see a message, um, you know, the title and then the colors. Um, those are more focused on one ideas. A quick Overview again about the bar chart and the pie chart. Bar chart is more standard to compare differences. It could show you changes in time. Uh, we unfortunately for the data set we were, we were using here, we didn't have the time differences, but you could add a trending line over there and you could see the different changes. We do have something similar in the reports that you had um, in Tableau that you can visit as well. For the pie chart that we displays as well, it will be best if you display it part of a whole um, instead of compare all of the differences because of you know the nature of the shape. It is also good to show how an entity breaks down into its components, like what we were saying, what were the age you know distribution um, among Utah. So just a quick recap before we let you go. Um, simplicity is the key. Make sure to focus on when you are creating data visualization, make sure to focus on one or two main messages. Um, definitely suggest you to add a title because that's the first or the second thing people look at. And it does give a direction to people of what you want to guide them to understand or to get a, a take away from the graph. Avoid 3D graphs. Um, it is a little bit more of a personal preference thing, um, but you can see from the demonstration, 2D graphs is a lot easier to understand than 3D. Uh, try to do, uh, try to reduce as much clutter as you can. Uh, what we did in the demonstration is that we removed the X line because we did add the data labels. You could also reformat the numbers if the numbers are too big. The last thing we want to remind you is the use of color. Make sure to use colors that are contracts, um, so it's easier for people to read and distinguish between each other. And then if for accessibility reason, if you can, try to use colorblind friendly palettes. And that is all I have for today. Thank you. I will give the time back to Jane. Great. Thank you so much, Jane. Does anybody have any questions for Jane Lowe about charts or graphs, it looks like uh, Brayden just put a, another link into the chat. Um, it's about pivot charts using filters. Um, lots of great support from Microsoft Online in addition to um, anytime you have a question, you're welcome to reach out to your EDC TA liaison. We're happy to answer any, any questions you have. Um, it looks like Caitlin's got another question. It says, do you have examples of colorblind friendly palettes that you could share? Anything quick online that you can think yeah, of, I Jane? Don't, yeah, I don't have one right now. Patty might have a link to it. I usually just Google colorblind palette, and then you should be able to download some um, on there. I believe the one in Excel might be the... I know the one in Tableau is definitely colorblind friendly. Yeah. Yeah, sounds like a super easy search, so... <laughs> Great question, though. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, we just want to remind everybody, you're so welcome to put questions in the chat if you have them. Um, we just want to remind everybody that next month, um, we are going to be talking about principles of survey design. Um, this is something that all of us do in our, in our work, creating surveys, um, whether they're large or small. 
But to create an effective one, there are some principles that can help us out. Everything from knowing how to design a welcome page, um, looking at question structure, the timing, um, things that might get in the way of good response, all of those things and more we're going to be talking about in October at our next Tech Talk. And our monthly challenge is going to be to take the Tech Talk survey. Um, Brayden's going to be putting the link um, to that survey in the chat. You can scan the QR code that you see on your screen as well if you'd like to. Um, take some time and think about it if you'd like. I'd like responses back by October 30th for our planning um, of our next Tech Talk series in 2025. We value what you do at EMSC, and we want to make sure that we're planning our trainings around things that you're doing. So some things to kind of spark the idea process is um, we do things about EMSE projects, trainings about analyzing data, um, PowerPoints, presentations, marketing and communication. Um, please feel free to fill out that survey and um, or you can just reach out to me. There's my email on the screen if you have any thoughts or ideas. The survey does ask um, your name and what EMSC program you are from. The only reason I ask that is in case I have additional questions about, you know, what would be helpful for you. So we at the EDC always are planning with our um, program managers in mind and just really appreciate all the work that you do. Um, if you have any other questions, are there any other questions in the chat, Braden? Um, nope, but uh, Patty and Rachel Alter have put in a couple of uh, links that they know of for like good color palettes and stuff. So you can definitely oh, check those out. That's great. That's great. Um, I'll also... Oh, Patty put in a, it's a, a PDF viewer, it looks like. Super. That's awesome. I'll be Which sure to include... In. Yeah, real quick, Jane, that's just you upload like a PDF of your graph and then it will show you actually what it looks like for all the different kinds of color blindness. Oh, cool. That's great. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing that, um, everyone. I will make sure that all of the links also get put into the email that we'll send out with a link to this Tech Talk. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And just thank you so much for joining us today. Have a wonderful day, everyone. We'll see you. Thanks, everybody.